one of the questions that our visitors ask the most to the research is, how do you become a scientist? And so the chance to interact with uh, these young ladies and young men and ask that question, how do you become a scientist and how did you get to working where you are with a hospital like the Hospital for Sick Children is a really incredible opportunity. I'll ask Dr. Shepherd here. He is a senior scientist at the Hospital for Sick Children. And he's going to tell you some more about this research. Thank you. We're focusing in this project, actually, on thoughts, action, action, and actions, and behaviors. But in particular, we're interested in two major psychiatric conditions. We're interested in attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and we're interested in obsessive compulsive disorder. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a condition characterized by uh, marked restlessness, attentiveness, impulsiveness, and a variety of different situations, impairing, persistent, gets in the way of the life of the children, uh, interferes with their uh, adaptation to school and in social situations. But more recently, people have learned a lot more about these kinds of conditions. In particular, we're beginning to understand that genes probably play a major role in these two conditions in particular, and in many others. So what we're doing is we're capitalizing on the idea that some of the genes that are likely responsible for the extremes of those traits will be shared by people who have high levels of those traits even though they don't have the disorders themselves. And what we're going to do is collect, by collecting 10,000 behavioral observations over the course of the summer, we'll be able to pick out those kids who report having a lot of symptoms, a lot of traits, restless and attentive compulsive traits, and compare them, compare their genome, with children who have very few or hardly any of those kinds of traits. So we have reason to believe that children with obsessive compulsive disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder have problems with certain cognitive processes. In particular, the ability to stop what they're doing suddenly. Kind of cognitive breaks, if you will. So what we've done is we've created a game which we call the Stop Pass, which can be played on a computer and is played on a computer around the corner. What you have to do on that task is you know, be instructed to respond really quickly to simple stimuli that come on the screen. And every once in a while, we give you a heat and some headphones. And you hear that beat, you're supposed to be trying to stop the song. So if you imagine you're responding really quickly to uh, the X's and the O's in the song, you're trying to hear a beat, and you try to freeze your action. And the children then spit into a little container, and as Kayla and Cynthia told you, from uh, a small amount of spit, we can now extract enough DNA that we can do a genome-wide scan and compare the genomes the DNA of individuals who have high levels of those traits to individuals who have low levels of those traits, and thereby find some clues to the genetics of the disorders that lie at the high end of the 